empowering the world one story at a time i i primarily curate for the platform and, and, and i run the company so yeah that's uh, that's about me she brings you closer to inspiring people where there's so many people who want to share stories and i think that's the beauty of it news ex influencer a list proudly recognizes kopal khanna for influence in storytelling Hello and welcome you're watching NewsX influencer A list and I have with me a storyteller Kopal Khanna Kopal first of all tell us about yourself and tell us about Tape Tale and as a kind of uh, impetus that it has started both online and offline Thank you Aarti for having me I'm really really excited to have this conversation with you Um about me so I like to call myself a storyteller and a story finder because there is that artist side of me which likes to tell stories uh but then I also run uh, the storytelling platform called Tape Tale where essentially people come and share their real life stories so it's a platform that I started 5 years back um with the thought of giving everyday ordinary people with stories to share a platform so these stories don't necessarily need to be inspiring or they don't necessarily need to have achieved something in life to be able to get the stage here these are slice of life stories everyday stories and um, the idea is to give uh, anybody who has a story to tell a platform so that is the story finder side of me because i i primarily curate for the platform and and, and i run the company so yeah that's uh, that's about me right so when you say you're a story finder right how do you then reach out to people or do you then get people who reach out to you who want to tell their story and then uh, you help them put their story out how does the process work uh, when you're connecting with the people who are you know telling their stories on tape with you right so initially when i started uh, tat um this was one of the biggest question marks for me as well i was like you know how will i reach out to people who want to share stories but i think personally that was the easiest problem for us to solve because there's so many people who want to share stories right like everybody wants to be heard everybody wants to um tell their stories and they just want a platform that uh, uh you know puts their story out in front of people right it's it's just that some people um have the skill set to be able to share a good story uh, versus print right so that's where we do the hand holding um, right now the process is fairly simple uh, people send us their work people send us their stories in audio format um, my team and i listen to the stories and then uh, if there is a story that we feel is really powerful or should be uh, on the platform we basically get on a call with the person and uh, kind of give them feedback work with them help them with, you know a stage presence and help them perform the story better basically mm-hmm. and that is how it works right now of course initially when i started the platform then it was a lot of me just calling my friends and being like please story sunado but uh, now that we have a little bit of a reach uh, that problem uh, thankfully has been solved where there's so many people who want to share stories and i think that's the beauty of it Absolutely, and like you mentioned, where you're also helping people be better performers, right? Um, as for you yourself as a performer, I'd like to know how you found the experience of both performing on stage and then sharing content online, and what is the sort of difference there? And, uh, and then, what has the feedback been from the people who have then told their stories, both offline and online as well? Right. I think for me personally. Uh... as the storyteller for the first one and a half years of running tape tail i didn't tell any stories i was only behind the scenes so i think i did a learning a lot of learning through just talking to people and being a person who um who gives uh you know who gives feedback to people and i think my um if i can call it expertise in that area comes from the fact that i am from a communications background myself i'm somebody who um has always had a lot of interest in storytelling and stories and watching stuff and talking to people so i think uh, just story by story storyteller by storyteller i have also kind of uh, i'm still learning uh, i don't think i'm i've reached a p- moment where i can say that okay you know i can deliver a perfect story i can help somebody to deliver a perfect story i think i'm also still learning with every storyteller and performer uh, and artist that i'm working with um, but i think that's how i have honed my craft over the years uh, by just talking to people and realizing that um the sim- the simpler a story is told the more powerful it is and i think that's the kind of uh, you know motto i try to follow uh, through my own storytelling and uh, what i try to even 
tell my performers that uh, the more honest authentic real simple you are the more powerful that story is basically Right. Speaking of that, speaking of the reach and the power that each story has, uh, there is no doubt some sort of competition that is evolving online, right, Kokal? Now, when you see there are several pages that are coming up, uh, some as professional as your page, some not as professional, just, you know, uh, that you don't see the people behind the pages sometimes. But there are so many stories uh, that you read online. So how do you then ensure that you're reaching the right sort of audience firstly and also catching their attention, holding it? So I think when we started out, um, we were one of the pioneers, uh, especially with storytelling. I think we were the first platform that kind of came out in India that did like the kind of storytelling that we are doing. Um, but I think as the videos started going viral, I think the beauty of this art form is somewhat similar to a, like comedy, where if you have access to an audience and a, a stage or, or, or a venue, you can just crack jokes you can tell a story Absolutely. right like yeah. you you, it, it, you know it's so i think that is why it became easy for people to start these platforms and become storytellers and it became like a very aspirational art form in the sense that everybody started feeling that i can be on the stage too i can be this person so it, it did not feel like a bollywood where if somebody's getting views it's a very far-fetched reality this was like you know i can be this person too it's a very touchable dream right so right. That, that that was the beauty so it's great that so many platforms came out and there's so much content but you're absolutely right with the number of videos coming in with the number of platforms coming in it also becomes uh some people then need to take that uh you know thing of i want to focus fully on curating the kind of stories that i want to stand for the kind mm -hmm. of content that i want to stand for and the kind of content that works for my audience right so for instance when i started five years back uh, there were certain kind of stories that were working, right? Like a lot of love was working on the page. But I think with time, uh, our audiences have also evolved, right? So I think keeping a tap on the age of the audience, the demography of the audience, and then kind of serving them the content rather than saying that I'm curating for Copal, I'm curating for my audience. So now that I know that, okay, my audience loves friendship stories. So can I go find more friendship stories, right? So I think it is just going in the back end and doing the research and, um, you know, knowing that really understanding your audience and being connected with them, I think that is the key to, uh, you know, cracking the curation model. Um, and we are heavily curated. Like we release only four stories uh, a month, hmm. which is like a very small number, but we want to be consistent with what we're putting out. But then we also really want to maintain the quality because right now there is, you're right, there's so much happening in this scene. Um, so yeah, I think that is how. So when you talk about storytelling, Kopal, what according to you is the most important aspect? Uh, not only when you're talking about online content creation and putting out stories there, but also offline when you're talking about picking a story. Uh, I understand you said, you know, connect with the audience, see what the audience likes, but there's also something about storytelling that essentially you need to add that element in, into it, whether it's a part of performance or if it's a package. So tell us a little more about that. Right. So I think for me um, and for how I have been viewing Taper Tales curation, I think it's relatability. And what I've realized in these last five years is that essentially all of us are more or less on the emotional front living similar lives. Right? Mm -hmm. We all feel like we have these unique experiences in a breakup or like in a friendship or in a love mm -hmm. situation, but um, or how we feel when we're alone or our family dynamics, but more or less if you're coming from similar backgrounds, it's we've had like similar experiences, right? Mm. But um, like, for instance, I'll give an example. I narrated a story a few years back called Chase Your Dreams, which was a story about me going to Alaska and seeing the Northern Lights, right? Mm. It was a very unique experience that I had that not everybody would be able to resonate with because not right. everybody can go to Alaska and see the Northern Lights, right? right? But I think the beauty of storytelling comes in when you kind of start viewing going to Alaska and seeing the Northern Lights as a dream that I had and I was chasing the dream and then I was able to accomplish that dream and fulfill it and the happiness and the joy that I felt mm. after, right? So that is the feeling everybody can resonate with because everybody's dreaming, everybody's, you know, struggling to get to their dream, right? right. So I think the idea is that when you take an experience that you as an individual has lived, but how can you make it relatable and how can you resonate that experience with the lacks of people that are listening to you, right? So I think that is what makes a story or a storyteller or a right written story good for me that I can find myself or I think that my audience will be able to find themselves even if the story is very unique.
in that absolutely way. and i think that's such an important thing especially in today's day and age right uh, when there's so many so many things happening both domestically internationally uh, you know with a war with covid people are struggling and to see other people their experiences whether good or bad to read uh, experiences with that human touch it really makes a big difference um so talking about that uh, talking about the responses uh, to go in detail into that tell us a little more about uh, the responses you've got the way people have reached out to you after reading the stories um, you know have you heard people saying that some of these stories have inspired them um, moved them uh, anything of that sort that you heard it's amazing like i mean i think that is that is my fuel to run the platform um, yeah, every day you know, we get messages from people and not just the listeners even the storytellers the impact that they've uh, experienced in the life after sharing a story right so mm-hmm. for instance um, like this is something that happened just like a few weeks back and uh, one of my storytellers called me saying that um, some guy he he didn't know gave him a call randomly arranged his number from somewhere not sure where so some friend 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 and he called him and said that hey listen i haven't spoken to my dad in the last 10 years because um, after my mom passed away um, i kind of blamed my dad for that and we haven't had like a conversation longer than 15 seconds after that uh, incident happened in our lives and we were both sitting and watching tv and somehow youtube pe recommend okay uh, your story the storyteller story started playing and that story is about the bond the storyteller shares with his father and he's like we just watched that story in complete silence and then suddenly uh, my father just got up and went inside the room and i was like i don't know what happened i thought he was teary eyed so i just followed him and for the first time in 10 years his father hugged him and they both apologized to each other and they both said that why did we put put ourselves through this and let's just whatever time we have remaining let's spend it happily and let's you know give each other the love and respect that we both deserve and that was it was so amazing to just hear that you know a 5 minute narration can mend a 10 year long you know uh, tiff between a father and a That's- son like that Absolutely, Kopal. I think it's beautiful the work that you're doing, and I hope that your stories continue to touch hearts and souls of people. And I hope you get to tell more such stories. We're looking forward to what more Tape Tale has to offer. Thank you for joining us today and sharing your journey, sharing your process with us. Thank you. Mastering the art of storytelling through music. you can make them both emotional and intellectual and um that's been really fun for me to explore via instagram youtube discord and all the platforms we're on a singer storyteller and inspiration to many humor may not be the thing but the emotional appeal might be the thing that i am you know connecting with so you just have to find what works for you and what you think connects newsex influencer a list proudly recognizes avanti nagral for influence in storytelling Welcome. You are watching News X Influencer A List. I'm Arthi Krishnan. With me, I have Avanti Nagral, who, in fact, is an influencer, a storyteller. Uh, she ensures that there are conversations and songs uh, on her feed. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, today, Avanti. Tell us a little bit about the content that you create. Thank you so much for having me, Arthi and News X. I'm really grateful to be here. Uh as you very rightly said you know I I create songs stories and conversations and um a lot of the content is around music education life skills and a lot of things we often don't talk about such as mental health or sex education uh, because I truly believe that the arts and media can be a space where you can talk about things that matter and you can make them both entertaining and educational you can make them both emotional and intellectual and um that's been really fun for me to explore via instagram youtube discord and all the platforms we're on right avanti now when you're talking about storytelling right it's an art form uh, that has been you know brought from history uh, our ancestors have been doing it like you said through art uh, so how do you sort of then bring it into the modern world uh, the the performance art and you know the storytelling Uh, through songs or uh, through acting how do you then bring that for uh, the digital audience that's a great question i think you have to know what the medium is you know as a as an artist first you know through songs you have 
two to five minutes to convey, you know, emotions with songs, you also have the melody, the lyrics, the composition, everything that adds to it. When it's just more talking one on one, uh, today's audiences, particularly younger ones, they're so used to seeing everything at their fingertips and they have access to so much content and so much information. So you have to know what they enjoy and why they enjoy it, right? For example, let's say you're giving information about, um, say, sexual health, right? One approach could be, this is X body part, these are the parts, this is what you should know. But that may or may not be appealing to a younger audience member because for them, they might want to see something that they can also relate to. So I think it's it's important whenever you are um, creating stories or whenever you are you know, packaging information that you want people to consume, putting yourself in the consumer's mindset. So that also means spending time with them, you know, getting feedback. And in our case, because you can have the ability to build a community online, you know, I, I get feedback from my audience regularly on what they enjoy, what they don't, what they care about, what they don't, and putting your own spin on trying to figure out how you might share it in your own style. You know, um, I think my style is, is more, uh it's wholesome in some sense you know it's it's a combination of um emotional and intellectual for some it might be more humorous you know i i include some humor but i'm not a comedian or i'm not a comedic you know storyteller so for me humor may not be the thing but the emotional appeal might be the thing that i'm you know connecting with so you just have to find what works for you and what you think connects Right, Avanti, now there are more uh, mainstream, uh, say, uh, storytellers in, in the platform. Right now, you would see people who are full-fledged doing only storytelling, where they're going on stage and performing, something like an open mic. But there are also a lot of uh, pages online, uh, content creators also, uh, who then go with uh, storytelling in a more uh, larger fashion, not through art, not subtly. Uh, so what do you say to that when you're, when, when you're, you know, putting out content in the way that you do, uh, how do you then manage a sort of competition that these, uh, these platforms that are majorly focusing on telling stories, they have teams behind them, how do you then uh, manage that? I don't think it's a competition. I'm in a true believer in collaboration over competition. For example, we partner with a large storytelling platform called Terribly Tiny Tales, which is an incredible platform. We've right. done a few IPs with them. We did one called Taboo Talks, where we talked about menstruation and periods. We're doing one soon on sex education. Um, and I think it's it's great for both, right? Because they come as a platform that specializes in this. I come as a personality and a voice. And of course, you know, Absolutely. with my music, um, we're able to, you know, use all of that together. Also for me as a performer, right, it's been a while since I've been physically back on stage, but a couple of weeks ago I had my first offline show and and just seeing how that translates, you know, where people know all the songs, lyrics to your songs, where people, you know, talk to you as if they know you so well because they've seen more than just your, your voice, you know, they're not just listening to the music, but they know who you are because if you are... A so a storyteller, you, you know, create on all these platforms. I think YouTube, for example, being a long form platform, people feel like they know you even more. So it's it's very interesting. It's it's a beautiful experience. And um, I don't think it's a it's a competition, to be honest. I think that there's space for everyone. And that's also evidenced by the fact that you have people on these platforms who specialize in, say, finance content, who specialize in legal content, who specialize, who are super specialized. And, and that to me is the coolest part. Right, that's a beautiful way to look at it. Uh, Nan, I also wanted to talk to you about, like you said, you know, you had gone back now uh, to doing uh, shows offline and, you know, performing on stage when it comes to that uh, and then and then putting your performance online or creating content specifically exclusively for uh, uh, online, you know, YouTube or Instagram. What is the difference that you've observed since you've done both? Massive difference. Uh, prior to the pandemic, I've you know, performed hundreds of shows between India, the US and elsewhere. And um, that connection with people in person is very, very different than doing it online. I almost thought that it couldn't be replaced, but there are spaces and avenues today. For example, Discord, we have a Discord server where right. I get to you know, I can pop into a voice chat and talk to people directly. And so I still feel like that connection is possible. But as a performing artist, the, the rush you get being on stage is very different. Um, in fact, in, as a musician, I've had to change my voice slightly over the past couple of years because if, say, I'm performing via Zoom or any other platform, if I, you know, belt, sing very loudly as I might on stage, you're going to hear a 
distortion because the will only technically clip. So I've actually had to train my voice to be able to sing to my computer and my phone for the last two years. So it's it's interesting just to see how how we adapt, right? Or if I'm performance medium, you just see me in this box. So I have to figure out how to be engaging with my face and my hands. Whereas on stage, I have to work the whole stage. So it's just, it's interesting and it's very cool that you have to adapt to different mediums. Um, and I think the, the other thing is, you know, um, being primarily a performer while all through while I was, you know, at Harvard in college, while I was in India, everything, um, it, it was very different because, you know, you're going from place to place, whereas also continuously, simultaneously building an online community. Um, I think younger consumers are not stream based consumers. They don't follow somebody because they are a singer or a dancer or an X, Y, Z, and they're less likely to put labels on you, right? They, they're more often than not personality based consumers. So, for example, if they like Avanti and what she stands for, they will like everything that she does, Absolutely. you know, or buy into at least everything. Right. Uh, so like you said, building a community is something that you've also focused on. Uh, which, you, know, you brought up such an interesting point of having to adapt to uh, posting online. And that's not just in terms of skills, whether it's editing, but also in terms of your actual uh, voice, you know, and presentation style. Uh, but then the community that you built is far closer uh, than, you know, than, but you did have connection when you were performing on stage, but then there's also some sort of connection that you're building online, right? You spoke about, Avanti, uh, bringing women uh, into uh, the mainstream platforms uh, in telling story through the platform that you have uh, by the songs that you sing, uh, by the stories that you tell. Uh, give us a little more information how you're doing that and how you're taking that mission forward. Totally. I think, you know, um, it's not just women, it's all genders, but I think women in particular, a lot of their issues go unnoticed, right? Um, and for example, talking about periods is not a woman's issue because A, not everybody who menstruates is a woman, but also B, it's a human issue. And what warms my heart is um, a lot of my audience or community is actually very young. Many of them are below 25 and you will see a lot of young men so open to talking about the feminists being, you know, people who are so empathetic because I think given that they have so much access to exposure and information on the internet in a way that older generations did not. They have more of an understanding. Um, I also think, I, I would say 70% of my audience calls me the or Didi. Um, so there's that, you know, very apna feeling that, you know, homely family vibe. And I, I genuinely think they feel that way. And I'm an older sister in real life as well. I have a younger, younger brother. And so for me, I now feel like I have hundreds of thousands of younger siblings and it makes me very, very happy. Um, because I think when you feel that human connection beyond just the screen, um, then that's the key to building community, however that might be, right? You may not want to do it from that familial perspective that might just be from uh, what you might connect on, but there's beauty in building that. And I also think there's beauty in uplifting other women. I've just seen too too often in the entertainment industries, particularly in music, a lot of the gatekeepers, I think one of the most important things is to with and for women. So last, which is a mini album, um, and a lot of the songs on it were about, and the team that worked on it was all female, because I think it was really important. Right, Avanti, now, uh, like you said, uh, the stories that you're bringing forward did bring positive reactions from the people who consume your content. Uh, now, give us a, for example, of the kind of reactions you've gotten online. Do people feel inspired uh, by the stories you're telling and how do they then reach out to you and what did they say? Oh, 100%. I can give a couple concrete examples. So, for ex uh, one of the things, you know, I've brought in both experts and also people in different fields to talk about things as well. For example, I make a few videos with my grandmother, um, who is a doctor. And I think for a lot of people seeing that intergenerational conversation about things like sex and sexual health or, you know, um, just gender roles, it plays a huge role because it's not just something that, say, a younger generation can watch. It's something they can also show their parents and their families. And I know has, for example, enabled people to feel comfortable talking about things at home right. because if a 20 something year old you know is talking about something 
thing, then for them it's like, okay, it's relatable and accessible. But if a dadi, no matter whose dadi it is, is also talking about that thing, it allows them to go beyond just their generation and help bridge that gap. Absolutely. Um, you know, we released a song last year called Suntolo, which is about mental health. And um, preemptively had partnered with a few mental health organizations. And when the song came out and all the video assets for it came out, just the outpouring of of things people were sharing that were on their mind that they wish they could tell other people. It was amazing because they felt safe enough to share that in our community spaces and, you know, online. But it also broke my heart that they didn't feel comfortable enough to share that at home. So as a result, we regularly partner with several different mental health organizations and resources and um, people are able to use, say, the code Suntolo to get access to free or affordable care. Or we do a lot of these sessions, you know, once a month, twice a month on our Discord. Um, Because, again, it's beyond just... um, For me, when I put out a song or when I put out a video or when I put out a piece of content, my job doesn't end there. A lot has gone into doing that, but that's not where my job ends. In my opinion, that's actually where my job begins because that can be the starting point to a conversation, someone's shift in their mindset, how somebody feels about something. And I try to keep it as real as possible, you know, including talking about when I have shitty days and when I have wonderful days and kind of how I think about things. and, and I see that in the kinds of ways people respond. People reach out with just the kindest words um, very often. And, um, you know, because I think they feel that familial connection, it feels like they're part of the journey with you. So that to me is the most beautiful thing when people notice that, including when people reach out and notice um, that say I might be looking tired or exhausted or maybe more sad than usual, they'll actually check in on me, which is not their job or responsibility, but because they, I think they feel that connection, it, it goes both ways. Right. Uh, thank you so much, Avanti, for joining us and sharing your process, sharing your journey. We hope you build more strong communities like this and continue making content. Thank you for joining us. Today. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.